Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture 7 of mathematical modeling and simulation. So let's begin. So in this lecture we are going to look at numerical problems related with population growth models. So in the previous 2-3 lectures we have covered different kinds of population growth models. So this lecture is dedicated to the questions related to those kind of models. So first of all, I would like to begin with giving you a summary of population growth models which have been discussed so far. So this is a general kind of a population growth model. dp by dt is some function of p with the initial condition p at t0 is p0. Now depending upon the value of fp, we have different different models. For example, in model 1, this was k. In model 2, it was k minus s. In model 3, it was k minus r into p. Model 4, minus rp. And then in model 5, it is plus rp. Model 6, b minus d, birth and death. And in model 7, it was kp into 1 minus p by p max. So these are the models which we have discussed so far in which model 1 and 2 are the linear growth models because there the birth rate or you can say the rate of change is constant. So that's why they give us a solution profile which is linear while model 3, 4, 5 and 6 are combinations of exponential growth and decay while model 7 is a logistic growth model. So without a further delay let's look at our first problem. It says that what should be the annual growth rate if one wants to double one's money in seven years. So before I give you the idea of how to look at these problems, the first thing should be clear that most of the times you will not be given the model into the problem. It's by looking at the problem or by reading the statement of the problem, you have to understand it yourself that which model is applicable there. So read the statement again. And let's try to figure out which model we have to apply here. So what should be the annual growth rate if one wants to double one's money in seven years? So obviously this has to be related with something growth. So we have studied linear growth, exponential growth and the logistic growth. So since they are talking about doubling money, so we know the concept of doubling rate was coming in the exponential growth model. So from here we have the idea that we have to use the exponential growth model and the exponential growth model is dp by dt is r into p with some initial condition p at 0 is p0. Now p the solution of this model we know is p is p0 e raised to power rt because it wants to double so p is 2p0 p0 p0 gets cancelled and we get this and substitute the value of t which is 7 years we get 7 into r is log 2 which gives us r is log 2 by 7 which turns out to be this 0 0.09902 roughly in terms of percentage it is 9.9 percent because usually in financial matters or money matters we always we try to express our models uh, sorry solutions in terms of percentage for example you might have heard talking people about okay the growth rate is 10 percent annual or 5 percent yearly or whatever it is so it's always better to express the final answer in terms of percentage so which is 9.9 percent so it's clearly telling us nearly 10 percent so if annual growth rate in our money in our invest investments is 10 percent then it will take seven years to double our money so that's a clear formula mathematically in front of you you can try this in life and practically uh, well check it that this is the actual scene so if some bank is offering you 10 percent growth rate per year so that means after seven years your money will be doubled compounded this interest should be compounded anyways so that's done that was easy let's look at problem 2 in a research on population dynamics of beetles you estimate that population size is 3000 so that means this is kind of the initial population size you have over the course of the month you record 400 births and 150 deaths estimate k k 
k means you want to estimate the rate of change of population and calculate the population prediction in 6 months. So let's see which model we have to apply. Since they are talking about birth and death, so obviously the model is birth and death proportional to the population. B minus D into P. So birth rate is 400 by 3000. So it's 0.1333 and death rate is 150 by 3000. Because that's how you compute rates. So, our B and D are calculated. So, model is B minus D into P, which gives me 0 0.0833 into P. So, K is 0 0.0833. And population, if you want to compute, so that means they are asking about solution. So, we know that this is exponential growth model. So, solution is this. So, P naught is 3000 and T is 6 months. So, if you substitute that, you will get P is 4945. So that's a different kind of question. Although we used similar model, here also we used exponential growth model, but this question statement was coming in a different sense. So most of the times this is going to happen because we have studied seven models. So more or less those seven models are sufficient to capture all kind of uh, real life scenarios. So the 99% time your model will be one of them. So you have to figure out yourself, understand that which model we have to apply here. So that gives us our final population 4945 after 6 months. Let's read problem 3. A sample of single celled marine algae provided an estimate of 1 lakh cells on initial data. So initial means obviously this is the initial population. 10 days later. So this is the time. The population size was estimated to be 5 lakh cells. So, population after 10 days is also given, initial population is also given. We have to calculate the rate of growth assuming exponential growth. So, here in this question, they have told you explicitly that the model which you have to use is the exponential growth model. So, as I said in the beginning that most of the times they don't tell you which model to apply. But in certain questions, they may give you hint or even tell you explicitly. So, here we know we have to use the exponential growth model. So directly we can start with its solution. No need to solve it again and again. So we know the solution is this. P naught is 1 lakh. This is given to us and final population after 10 days is 5 lakh. So you substitute the value of P and P naught in the solution. We will get this. T is 10 days. So this gives me R is log 5 by 10 per day which is 0 0.1609 per day. So don't forget to write the unit of rate of growth because although these are constants but they have dimensions, they have certain units because this is a rate. So the rate is always having dimension per unit of time. So since it was 10 days, so that's why its unit has to be per day. So this much is the rate of growth per day. That's the value of R. In terms of percentage, you can say it's 16% okay, per day. But it's okay, you don't want to quantify everything in terms of percent, so you can simply write like that. So that was it. Here also we used exponential model. In problem 4, you have to calculate the doubling time for a population of a plant which is known to increase by 12% every year. So same is here, this question is about finding the doubling time. So from that we get the hint that the model used is exponential growth. See, most of the times exponential growth model is being used. It's just a different statement is giving me a different way of finding it out. So the doubling time direct formula is log 2 by R. So R is computed like 12% per year means it's 12% of the last year's population gets added. So it's P plus 12% of P, which is making it 1.12 into P. So R is 1.12. So we can find doubling time is log 2 by r, which is 0.6188 years. So even less than one year it is taking to get the value double for the population. But since this is time, doubling time, so the unit is years. So that's it here. I didn't solve the model, but I directly know the formula of doubling time. So it really depends upon you. You want to solve it and then use a doubling time as we did in the first example. But directly also you can use the formula. 
Read the statement of problem 5. Every time you brush your teeth, bacteria enter your blood circulation. Since this is a nutritious environment for them, they immediately start to grow exponentially. So again, very clear hint, this question is also about exponential growth. You might be thinking why we are doing every question of exponential growth. Actually, most of the questions in population growth dynamics are from exponential growth model because that's the most extensively used model to study different population growths. And by giving you different, different kind of statement, I'm making you aware that Although the statement can be a little bit twisted, but eventually you have to use those two, three formulas to get your final answer. Get back to the statement. Fortunately, we have neutrophils in our blood that kill bacteria upon encountering them. So the model is also given to you. So this is a different question in which the model is directly given to you. Where B and N are the number of bacteria and neutrophils per ml. R is growth rate of bacteria per hour. K is the rate at which bacteria is killed by neutrophils. So just read the last line. That's the question. What is the doubling time of bacteria in the absence of neutrophils? So obviously here also this question is similar to just discuss previous question. There also we computed doubling time. Here also we have to compute doubling time. So the model there was exponential. The model here also is exponential. But if you read it clearly, it's they are talking about absence of neutrophiles. Means no neutrophiles are there. That means in your model, you have to put n equals to 0. So db by dt is just rb, which is obviously exponential growth. So we know the formula of doubling time is log 2 by r. And r is not given to us. So we have to just leave the answer like that. Had the specific value of R would be given to us, we could write it here. Otherwise, this would have been the answer. So this is actually practically no calculation done in this question. The only important po point was to understand the, what is the meaning of absence of neutrophils. So we have to incorporate these special kind of uh, conditions given in the model itself and sometimes in the solution. So no need to solve this model and then put n equals to zero. Directly in the model you put n equals to 0 and get your answer very easily. So that was all about problem 5. Let's look at problem 6. Red blood cells are produced in a bone marrow at the rate of m cells per day. So something is being produced. They have a density dependent death rate of d per day. See they did not talk about the density dependence for the birth. So that means birth is just happening at a constant rate which is m. But the death is happening not at a constant rate, but it is dependent upon the density. Means uh, higher the density there, so higher it should be the death rate. So that means it should be proportional to the density. So we have to formulate a suitable mathematical model. So this is a different question of its kind. In this, they are asking you to first formulate a model for this kind of situation and discuss the solution. Actually, these are the original kind of questions because here your thinking is checked that how you are able to develop a model yourself. Out of the existing models, you have to pick one model. That's a different task. But these kind of questions are the real mathematical modeling questions where you are asked to formulate the mathematical model yourself. Although the model can be very simple, but it checks how you want to think about developing a model. So let's do that. So as I told you, it's a birth death model because something is being produced and the same thing is dying but the birth is happening at a constant rate but death is happening at density dependent so the model should be dp by dt is b m minus dp where m is the birth rate and d is the death rate so this is dependent on density as i've just explained you so it will be multiplied with p it's proportional to the population now you just need to solve it so we have solved similar kind of models in our previous lecture. So following the similar lines, we can get it here. So you can read the solution which I'm doing. It's exactly same what we have discussed in one of the models. In fact, this was our model number three, if you recall. So just the parameters notations are changed. Otherwise, the solution is going to be same. So ultimately we get p is m by d plus m by d minus p naught into e raised to power minus dt. This is our solution. If you recall, this is that kind of model. So one factor was a growth factor, the other factor was a decay factor. So 
this question was all about formulation of mathematical model and the solution so we have solved it let's move to next problem a fisheries biologist is maximizing a fishing yield by maintaining a population of lake trout at exactly 500 individuals predict the initial instantaneous population growth rate if the population is stocked with an additional 600 fish assume that r is 0 0.005 individuals so here we have to think a little bit different that this model is exponential or not because nowhere explicitly they are talking about the terms exponential growth or uh, the terms like doubling rate or something like that but they are talking about maximizing fishing yield so you know the possibility of maximizing the rate of growth fishing yield means they are producing fish and they are getting the fishing yield at the maximum rate means the number of fish which they are getting per day or yeah per day is maximum so this kind of concept is present in the logistic growth we know that dp by dt is maximum at inflection point if you recall so that's why the model used here will be the logistic growth model so we know that the rate of growth is maximum which is dp by dt this is the logistic model so this is maximum at the inflection point which is 500 so that means p max by 2 is 500 because inflection point is p max by 2 so p max is 1000 so we got the value of p max now p is 500 plus 600 because initially it was 500 but additional 600 fish have been added so makes it 1100 so dp by dt is k the k is 0 0.005 given to us in the question and substituting rest of the values i'll get minus 0 0.055 fish per day so that means actually this dp by dt is negative so it is decreasing for whatever the data given to us so i may uh, recall you or uh, re-explain you the uh, question which we have just solved it was logistic model so we write the equation dp by dt is kp into 1 minus p by p max and from the information that they are maximizing at 500 individuals so that means 500 is the inflection point and we know that inflection point the population is p max by 2 so p max is 1000 but in substituting here we want to calculate dp by dt they are asking predict the initial instantaneous population growth rate so this is the instantaneous population growth rate the value of the derivative they are asking so for that we need to know k p and p max so k is 0 0.005 p is 500 plus 600 and p max is 1000 so when you substitute it here you get minus 0 0.55 fish per day so if you recall the logistic growth model which we have discussed there the curve was always increasing because our p naught was always less than p max if you look at it graphically so if you draw population versus time and suppose here is p max and if you start somewhere before below p max you will eventually get this kind of curve where p max is obtained asymptotically while if you start at any initial condition higher than p max then eventually also you will approach p max with time it will decay exponentially although in our theoretical uh, lecture we didn't discuss this kind of case but numerically you can see that whenever you start from initial population which is greater than p max then there will be a decrease in the population and you will eventually reach p max so that means p max is the ultimately steady state answer steady state or equilibrium solution what wherever you start from it does not matter you eventually in the long time have to reach the maximum population so that's why this is turning out to be negative minus 0.55 so that was a different problem because in which we had to first identify that the model used is logistic model and then we have to justify this as well although there is no need to justify why this is coming out to be negative but this was to make you understand that wherever you start from in logistic growth your final answer will land you at p max let's look at the last problem problem 8 
the sales of a particular brand of a stove satisfies the following logistic growth equation so like in this question they have explicitly given you the model as well this ds by dt is given to us and rather they have told you this is the logistic growth their initial sales so initial sale is your p naught or s naught in this case how much are the sales when they are growing the fastest so that means they are asking you to compute the sales your unknown which is capital s when they are growing the fastest growing the fastest means your rate of growth is maximum so it's again the inflection point situation because we know that the rate of growth of population is maximum in logistic growth at p max by 2 so the same concept which we used in the previous question will be used here so ds by dt is maximum growing the fastest means this and we know that ds by dt is maximum at p is equal to p max by 2 so now we need to find p max so for that you look at the model again just simply phi it and express it in the same form as we have the logistic growth curve so it's this form ds by dt so when you compare it with logistic growth which is dp by dt is constant into p1 minus p by p max so we get p max is 2 into 10 raised to power 7 which gives me p is 2 into 10 raised to power 7 by 2 when growing fastest because p has to be p max by 2 so for p max i had to express it in the same form as we have the original logistic model so that we could figure out p max so substituting it here we get the value so that was about problem 8 so these are the kind of questions related with logistic growth they are most of the time related with this inflection point kind of questions because they are not unnecessarily asking you to do the solution or find the population at this particular point because the solution is complicated it's difficult to compute manually most of the questions we do with this logistic growth are done in labs done with the help of computer programs manually when you have to do so only these kind of questions are asked usually so that's all about i have uh, co tried to cover almost all kind of problems related with population growth models and let's see what we have in the next lecture so if you recall before starting with the population growth models we were discussing the topic process of mathematical modeling which include four steps of mathematical modeling or four methods you can say first was dimensional analysis which we have already covered second is scaling third is conservation laws and fourth is linearization so in the next lecture we are going to look at scaling because then we took a break from the theory this all these all four parts are theoretical so we took a break from the theory after completing dimensional analysis i gave you one model which was population growth but now we have to finish the theory so we are going back to this process and we'll be taking up scaling in the next lecture thank you